Hey guys, and welcome back to Chemistry 1032 Blended Class Instructional Videos. I am your professor, Dr. Russell Betts, and we'll be finishing off Chapter 8 by talking about osmosis and diffusion. Now, osmosis, let's define it. Before we even get into what these uh, words up here are saying, let's just define the term osmosis. Now, in a situation where you have a, say, a beaker, and in that beaker, you put a semi-permeable membrane. Just a membrane. Now, if you want to think about what a semi-permeable membrane is, it's a piece of plastic. Let's just say that. It's a piece of thin plastic with really tiny holes in it. Really tiny. And through those holes, water can pass from one direction to another. Okay? Water can freely move across the membrane without any problems. So far, so good? But only water can. Nothing else can. Now, in reality, other things can cross membranes. But let's just, in our situation, let's just say only water can cross the membrane. And now let's fill this beaker up equally on both sides. So far, so good? Okay. Now, if to one side and one side of the beaker only, I add sugar. Sugar can't cross the membrane. So if I add it to the right side of the beaker, it will stay on the right side. It will not move to the left. So then there'll be a whole bunch of S's in here, right? There we go. So a whole bunch of sugar now is dissolved in that water. So what's going to happen? Well, what happens is water from this side of the beaker will cross the membrane. And the result of that is, let me just erase some of this. There we go. The result of that is the water layer on the left will decrease. The water layer on the right will increase. And that's osmosis. Osmosis is what happens when solvent, usually water, goes from an area of low concentration to high concentration. So the water on this side of the beaker is moving to that side of the beaker. That's osmosis. It moves towards, the solvent will move towards the side with the higher solute concentration or dissolved solids. Sounds good? That's what it is. Okay? Now this phenomenon does not occur indefinitely. Eventually this will stop. And when it stops is when the pressure of the water pushing down against the membrane, so the water molecules are pushing against the membrane, stops osmosis from occurring. And that's known as osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure is the pressure experienced by the membrane stopping osmosis, more or less. Now, write that word down, or that term, isotonic solutions. Now, in an isotonic solution, what that's saying is, that the dissolved solutes on both sides of the membrane are equal. So in our situation that we had here, let me draw another one, just another beaker. There we go. So in an isotonic solution, the solids, sugar, doesn't have to be sugar though, guys. It could be anything, as long as it's a solute. There you go. The solute's concentration are equal on both sides of the membrane. So water exchange will just be, uh, water exchange is always occurring. Don't, don't forget that. Water is always moving back and forth across the membrane. But in a situation where it's isotonic, one water molecule to the right and one back to the left, it's equal. The exchange will be equal at that point. Okay? And that's known as isotonic. So the osmotic pressure on both sides of that membrane is equal. And that's normally what our cells are experiencing, is an isotonic solution. Hypotonic. Now, hypotonic, um, well, let's read this. When a person drinks a large quantity of water, the water dilutes the blood, resulting in an imbalance between the concentration of the solute outside the cell and inside the cell. That's the solution outside the cell is what they call hypotonic. Water will travel across the cell membrane in an attempt to equalize the concentration. The passage of water is called osmosis. Now, let's think about this for a second. Here we have our beaker. Imagine this is a cell. Now imagine this is inside the cell. 
This is outside. So here we go. We have a happily. We have a happy solution where the concentration on both sides is the same. Okay, so the concentration on the left, the concentration on the right, same isotonic. Now let's imagine you drank a whole bunch of water. You just drank a bunch of water, maybe even a dangerous amount of water. So what's that going to do? That's going to dilute. It's going to dilute the outside of the cell. So now maybe there's only going to be per volume two solute molecules per volume. Now remember, we're talking about concentration, not absolute amount of solute. We're talking about concentration, which is solute per volume. Okay, so you drink a lot of water, you dilute the solute concentration. So what's going to happen is the water is going to go this way towards the, the higher concentration. Water will always travel across the membrane to the higher concentration okay and the net result of that will be the cells will swell up let me get my face out of the way guys sorry there we go the net result will be this the water on the right inside will increase okay so the inside of the cell the volume of the, the volume of the solvent is going to increase this is outside So the solvent increases. Now, in a beaker, that's no big deal. It, it maybe it'll spill over the sides. We'll have a small mess. No big deal. But in a cell, remember, a cell is an enclosed, if you want to think of it, think of it as a sack. It's an enclosed bag filled with water. And now if wa more water is entering the bag, the bag is going to swell up a little bit. It's got a little bit of swelling, probably not a big deal. But what if it swells up to the point where poof, the bag just bursts open? That's probably not, a, well, that's definitely not a good thing if it's in your body and they're your cells. You need them, right? That's why they're there. So when that happens, when too much water enters the cell, the cells will swell up and could even burst in a phenomenon known as lysing. Lysing meaning cutting or breaking, okay? That could happen in a hypotonic solution where water will enter the cell, all right? Here's osmotic pressure. Let's just uh, read the de definition the book gives you. I already kind of told you. As water flows through a semipermeable membrane, the water molecules in the more concentrated solution exert pressure on the membrane. Literally, there's the, the, the water inside of a cell gets more and more and more. The cell gets more and more and more and more rigid. What's happening now is those water molecules need room, right? They have to have a place to stay. And if they're, if a, if a, mem if a cell or whatever is so filled with water, the water is the water inside the cell literally will block the water on the outside from coming in. You can't come in, man. We've got no room. Okay? That's osmotic pressure. Make sense? I hope. If not, re maybe read the book a little bit. This uh, Osmotic pressure is one of the more challenging things for students to understand. Basically, it's the back pressure exerted after uh, osmosis has occurred. Uh, hypertonic solution. There's the next thing you have to know. Hypotonic solution. So, if you're uh, drinking seawater, which you should never do, never drink seawater, never drink seawater in large quantities. If you take a mouthful of water while you're swimming, that's probably not going to do you a big deal. But you certainly don't want to drink it as your only source of water. You want to drink fresh water, preferably through a carbon filter. Just putting a little ad out there for carbon filters. Now, what happens in seawater, or what happens when you drink seawater? Well, you'll put more solute into your blood. So let's take a look here. Here's our beaker slash cell. Here's the inside. Here's the outside. Here we go, and there we go. So if we drink seawater, the amount of solute on the outside goes way up because remember there's a lot of things dissolved in seawater called salt water right that's what we call it salt water lots of electrolytes dissolved in there and here's the inside of your cell and it may only have a few solute constant a uh, few solute molecules in comparison to the outside so what's going to happen well again osmosis will send water across the membrane to the higher solute concentration so water is going to exit the cell and go into the environment in an attempt to dilute 
the solute concentration on the outside of the cell. And we all know that's not going to work. Well, it'll, sorry, I shouldn't say it, it'll work, but it's not going to be good, okay? So then the water level on the outside will go up, on the inside will go down. You can already see this is probably not a good idea. And then, of course, there's a whole bunch of solute out here. Don't count the S's. I'm, I'm just kind of scribbling them in. Now, this is not a good thing. This is a bad thing. Because remember, cells are bags. Okay, they're just imagine a bag of water. And say you had a nice plump balloon. Say balloon. Balloons are probably a better example. Say you have a nice plump balloon of water. All right? And then when you allow the water to escape by osmosis, the balloon is going to shrivel up until it becomes deflated. Now, that's a bad thing, especially for a cell, because then you have what's called crenation. And crenation is basically what occurs when you dehydrate. Your cells will shrivel up. Your cells need water for chemical reactions to occur. And if you take the water away, the less likely you are to have those chemical reactions occur and bad things will happen. Okay? I mean, all of us have probably been a little dehydrated in our life. Uh, just think back to that. Think how tired you were. Think how you just didn't feel well. Now, imagine that being multiplied by 100 or something. Like you're lost at sea or something and you're drinking seawater. You know, think about how, how weak you will feel. It's just an, an incredible thing. All right, now here's just a, a picture. So here's an isotonic solution. These are nice, plump, healthy cells. Water's entering and leaving the cell at equal rate, at equal speed. Here we have hypotonic. So the water's entering the cell. So that means the cell, the solute concentration inside the cell is greater than outside. So water's going into the cell to dilute it. Cells plump up a little bit. And here are some, some red blood cells that are plumped up. You can see they're missing the... Uh, Little indent, the little indent is almost gone. Eventually, they'll, they'll burst open. And here, let me move my mug out of the way. There we go. And here, we have a hypertonic solution. Now, look, the solute concentration on the outside is greater than the inside. So water is exiting, trying to dilute its environment. Obviously, that's not going to be good de a good deal for the cell. And as you can see, these cells do not look healthy. They look jagged. They look like they're probably not going to be uh, very healthy for you to have. So there you go. Osmosis. Water will travel across the membrane to an area of higher solute concentration. And when that happens, you can either get hemolysis or crenation, depending on where the higher solute concentration is. All right, guys. Now that's the end of Chapter 8. I mean, we're moving right along here. So you know what? I want to post these videos, get them up there for you. And I want you guys to watch them, bring your notes to class and all that good stuff. And I'll see you next time. Good luck, guys, and good chemistry.